Hi, this is Graham Bell with Real Intent. I'm speaking with Sarath Kirahindage, Senior Product Engineering Manager at Real Intent. Hi, Sarath. Hi, Graham. How are you doing? Good. Uh, mm -hmm. Off camera, we were talking about uh, the whole world of uh, constraints, SDC. What are some of the issues related to mm -hmm. Synopsys design constraints? Um, how do people uh, manipulate uh, SDC files today? And, uh, what are what are some of the things that people are working with to get designs done today? The SDC is created in multiple ways. Uh, one is that if you are starting a, a design from a scratch or IP from a scratch, and then you will write the constraints uh, depending on the, the design functionality or the, the timing goals. And uh, there are designs or IPs that you will um, use uh, existing IPs that you will use, and then that those IPs or those blocks comes with the um, come with the existing SDC. So you will modify the constraints, existing constraints, to to go with the, your new design timing requirement. It is a mixture. Some may be created from the scratch, and then some may be modified to to meet your new design goals. Well, how can you keep track of all of these changes? I mean, obviously, I've got some some yeah. constraints I did in house, and then I've got this new IP that came in, and okay, I've got to sort of make those together, mm -hmm. and then I'm building an SOC, so I've got a lot of different blocks that I'm bringing together, put together. Uh, how do designers kind of sort of managing that? So, in the uh, in the today's methodology, um, there is no automatic way of uh, doing all the the things that you just described and there is no EDA s solution for so f for creating constraints from the existing ones and managing it and finding out what are the inconsistencies between those modified constraints so it is a very tedious task and then users are doing this through scripts and spreadsheets and all sort of other homegrown methodologies right uh, so there is no actually uh, automatic way of doing all the, the work that they need to, to manage uh, these constraints today. What else do you think they need in this kind of a solution? So uh, the constraints, there are three aspects to constraints. Uh, one is the constraint has to be complete for the design, otherwise your timing sign off uh, will not be possible. And the second one is the, the constraint has to be correct. It has to to be correct in terms of the design functionality. It has to meet the timing goals as well as the design functionality. The third one is the consistency. Um, so when you're bringing all the constraints together and then integrate your SOC, all the constraints coming from different IPs, different blocks, different uh, designers, they have to be consistent and then should not conflict um, the constraints between each other blocks. Right. So those are the challenges. Users are today looking for a solution to address this. On top of those three features, users need uh, some sort of automatic way to manage their constraints. The constraint management is basically um, throughout the process project, you need to be able to find out what constraints has been added and what has been removed what is history of the, the constraint changes as well as oh, which portion of the design that is being affected by those changes. So that the constraint management solution that users are looking for. So in terms of SDC, I mean it's obviously used in the mm -hmm. static timing analysis flow. Is SDC used in any other parts of the verification flow? The clocks are defined in SDC, but uh, the, the timing, SDA, anal uh, does not verify whether the asynchronicity or synchronicity of those clocks are correct. The STA used this clock definition to time the paths. So therefore, the clock definition and their uh, asynchronicity or synchronicity uh, is not verified. Uh, now, those needs to be verified by clock domain crossing uh, technologies to make sure that you have defined the, the asynchronicity correctly. And if it is correct, then you do have a proper structures in place to handle those asynchronous crossing between the clock. So with the defining correct clocks and then their relationship is important not only for timing analysis but also for clock domain crossing verification, low power verification and X verification methodologies. 
So it, it is being used in multiple places, but we need to have a single solution making sure that the constraints are correct and then being used by multiple other places. Uh, Sarath, thanks for speaking with us today. Thank you again. My pleasure.